Quite a few months ago I made a video of about 25 minutes long on the high street and the how the high street has actually been affected over the last 50 years in terms of in terms of slowing down um, and attracting fewer and fewer people to it um, because there was a lot of press and a lot of media coverage on the high street being affected by the by the internet um, and I, I wanted to point out that well the high street has been had a, has had an impact on many things which has caused the 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 slowdown in 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 foot traffic in people actually going to the high street um, and i wanted to get that message across um, what i want to cover more about now is is how we fix the problem how do we get this situation right who should be getting more involved should it be government national government should it be local government should it be more the you know private enterprise private business in terms of the, the big players or should it be more the small players and and we should you know try and get some logic into how we fix this problem because there are some high streets that do very well there are some high streets that still um, perform exceptionally well as high streets and and and, and attract masses of people through the course of, of, of the week. So how do they do that? Well, I've got to say, in most cases, high streets are successful today, not because of the government, not because of, be it local or, or, or national, and not because of the major retail players, you know, the Tesco's, the, the Sainsbury, the Asda's, etc. No. The high streets that are successful are the ones that have been enhanced by the local communities. It's the local people in those areas and the local businesses in those areas that have gone on to, to compete and offer services in, in terms of quality of products, in terms of just the enhancement of the whole value equation of the service uh, that have made them successful. And if I think about um, high streets in the smaller towns like the Baitlock, uh, Bakewells and the Matlocks or the largest town centre, city centres like the Yorks, um, you know, these are the these are the the, the 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 success stories that are out there, and there are many out there that 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 do a, a good job in their high streets. They have good local markets, farmers markets. They have good local businesses, and they have enhanced. And you know, the general people in those communities have also continued to support those local businesses because they appreciate them, and think they are a better offer when it comes to certain key goods than it is going to the large national multiples and that's why they're doing it so i think the success for high streets and what will make high streets successful in the future is the local community the local business in that community and how they evaluate what is needed in those communities and then obviously putting the right value equation together for those local communities you see that is something national chains cannot they can't do that a national chain has been geared to manage everything from a top central point so store a has got to look the same as store b and store c and store and the only thing they can really adjust is to some extent range because certain things don't sell in this region, so we'll put less of it in that store. And price, where they can adjust prices accordingly, regionally, if they have to. But they can't really do much else. Generally, when you walk into a Morrison's or a Tesco, you're walking into the same footprint wherever you go. It's the same, whether you're in the north of the country or the south of the country. Now, the beauty of local businesses is they, go, they don't have to worry about that. They can make it right for your village, your town, your city. 
local produce that comes out of that region can be enhanced and, and shown off and made to be even more attractive than the national chain's produce. Local garments that are made in that area can be enhanced and shown in that area. I'm just gonna get that phone. Apologies for that call, that was just somebody, uh, again, it's due to online activities, someone who's picked up my name on a database somewhere and, and wants to try and sell me something. And it, it, it's that type of thing that we seem to be living in these days, which, which is making the whole world go round. And it's something which I believe is, we've got the, you know, I really don't have time to talk to people about things like that these days, because they're getting, they get it wrong now. Um, consumerism is going in the wrong direction. Anyway, getting back to the subject on high streets. Local, local people, local business. They are the key to making it work. Now, my hometown, town of birth, Northampton, when I was growing up as a lad, there was huge amounts of local businesses here. Yes, Tesco were there. They were in the high street, Gold Street, before Western Favel opened on the, on the outskirts of the town. Gold Street Tesco was the local Tesco, but as I said before, it wasn't selling a broad range of, of fresh foods, it was selling very s small amount, and it was mainly selling tin goods, dried goods, and, and housewares, households. Um, but the local businesses, the Dewhurst Butchers, the Saxby's Delis, the fruit, the, the fruit and veg merchants, green grocers as we call them, the bakeries, I think it was Adams the bakery, I think Adams have still got a baker shop in, in Northampton if I'm not mistaken. Um, they were there in force, plus the market square was always buzzing, always busy. That was what was drawing the traffic into the town, plus Marks and Spencers were there, which are not there now, they've also closed down in, in the high street. Um, and the town was a bustling community, particularly on the market days. A lot of those businesses now, the Saxby's of this world, I think they still make the pork pies in a central point and they supply supermarkets um, um, or supply certain supermarkets, but they have died. The, the local convenience stores then were Tesco because Tesco and Sainsbury's weren't in the convenience market at all. Um, spa were there obviously but it was um, the, the, the chain that added the most volume in sales in groceries across Northampton was Civil Supermarkets. Civil's was the main retail chain that was in the in the area um, and so local community was playing a part back then. Now Tesco and Sainsbury who were in the town centres, um, pulled out the, pulled out of the town centres, opened up larger units on the outskirts of, of town, opened up their fresh food offers, which gave way then for for a lot of local businesses to succeed, and the people went into these into these Tesco's to buy etc. And well, the rest is history. You know, they they were started selling the fuel. And uh, that was it. That was how it went. Um, but do they make a? Do they do a better deal than, than the local guys? No, they don't. Do, is their quality better? No, it's not. Are the master butchers better than the master butchers in the old Dewhurst stores and the local butchers? No, they're not. In fact, quite the reverse, I would say. It's about getting back to local value equations. This is where the strength of the high street will come back into fruition. This is where local business has the advantage over national business. And this is how I believe we've got to go with our high streets. For all, more information on this, I, I, I would like you to, to make contact with me directly and I will, I will then obviously spend more time with you in terms of how you can turn your local business around or enhance your local business to be more effective in your local market against the large national multiples. Okay, talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.